Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in for our first Eagles Talk Sportscast of the semester. I'm Ben Grimato here with Justin Meebeck. Today we have Brockport's very own Empire 8 Offensive Player of the Year, D3 Football First Team All-East selection, and starting quarterback for the Brockport Golden Eagles, Joe Germanario, with us today to recap their historic Final Four run. So Joe, what are your, some of your overall thoughts of the past season? Some of my overall thoughts, I, I thought it was a great season. Um, we set the Empire 8 record for wins with 13. We had our first ever Courage Bowl win against St. John Fisher in a dominating fashion in 38-7. to seven. Um, we, uh, we had our first ever Empire 8 championship and what a game that was against Alfred and then obviously our, our first playoff run starting with Plymouth State and you know kind of running the table all the way to Texas and it was just great the atmosphere game after game the fan support that we had all year it was it was phenomenal to see. Now was there a moment during the season a specific moment where you guys seriously thought you could make a push for a national championship? Absolutely. I mean, we had a 10-0 and perfect regular season, and I remember I tweeted it after we were in uh, the Eagle lookout room seeing the bracket dealt, and we, uh, we thought we had a favorable bracket to get to the Final Four, and I tweeted, let's try and win this thing. So, I mean, little by little, like I said, with Plymouth to Wesley uh, to that game-winning kick against Del Val, I mean, we were right there. We were a game away from the national championship, so... I mean, it shows right there, and we're going to try and just correct what we did this season to try and make that push into the national championship for next year. So you talk about all the good stuff you did this season, and obviously there's not a lot of bad when you make such a historic run, come one game away from the national title, but is there anything you could have done better this season? Absolutely. There's always room to improve. Um, I feel like I could have limited turnovers with uh, interceptions and fumbling, really, where a lot of times I was fortunate where fumbles went out of bounds. Um, and just growing from within the pocket where a lot of times uh, protection is there and I'm kind of rolling out and cutting the field in half instead of just stepping up in the pocket and finding guys there. There's always room to grow and that's why me and Coach Mangoni are going to look at tape, try and fix some things and um, really just try and work on mechanics and just try and get better every day. Now the last time we saw you guys, it was in the semifinal game against the University of Mary Harden Baylor and you guys lost 24 to nothing. Now, I know it was a rough game against the defending national champion, but what can you and your team take away from that game going into the upcoming season? I mean, we went into a hostile environment and played the defending national champs, and you mentioned 24 to nothing, but I mean, every guy in that locker room will say the, the score didn't really reflect the entire game. Um, I know the second play of the game, I want that back really bad. A lot of my friends still bust my chops, like, what were you doing there? Because the way the ball just came out funny, the pick happened, and then we, I mean, we set our defense up for failure with them getting the ball inside the 10, and then that fumble didn't help us either. So we kind of shot ourselves in the foot there in the first quarter, and really, I mean, our defense obviously all year has been great, and they played toe-to-toe -to -toe with the defending national champs offensively. If we could have mustered, you know, a little, uh, just sustained a little more drives, I feel like we could have been in that game and really, again, been in that national championship. So that's something to correct because, I mean, we were there. So we know what we have to do now, and we know what it takes with the work this offseason to get over that hump and beat a defending national champ or a Mary Harden Baylor. Now what big changes do you see with the team this upcoming season? I know the team now has a couple of linebackers coming out of high school, really good linebackers I just saw. Yeah, no, I mean right now we're in the recruiting process and this Saturday will be our third uh, recruiting weekend and we already have a ton of commits and we're really excited. All the coaches, I'm in the office daily, they're really excited for what we have going on. Um, and just the pieces of the freshmen going to sophomores and really making that next step is going to be huge. I know me as a freshman going to my sophomore year, I feel like I made that step and I'm going to try and continue to grow where a lot of our guys are going to do the same. Guys like the, uh, Hub who set the receiving record. We know he can, he, he can work on route running and get better and he wants to get better every day. Tyree, every, a lot of guys on def defensively. Um, talk about Alex West who is a, on an East Region selection. Uh, and he, he wants to elevate his game even more. You could go on and on with uh, Josh Greenwood as a freshman to a sophomore. He wants to elevate his play and have 10 and a half plus sacks. And, you know, it just, the list goes on and on. So uh, we're going to transition this to another topic. And this is your start of your collegiate career. So you actually started and you registered at the University of Albany mm -hmm. where you were a quarterback and wide receiver. Talk a little bit about your transition, your journey to Brockport. So you originally were you recruited at Brockport. And how did you come from Albany to going to Brockport. Yeah, you know, I mean, my time in Albany was great. I was taught, you know, they taught me how to be a college football player, but I felt like that I ended up switching essentially from QB to safe, or excuse me, to receiver. <laughs> and uh, I, ultimately, I wanted to play QB. So the fall of 2016, it was, I was looking for other schools. I, I took a visit, and uh, Coach Mangoni and Coach Potter showed me around. I, I really enjoyed what, and what I saw and they, what they were telling me and where the program was going. I took a shot here, and uh, 
it's really uh, it's been great ever since. Obviously, going into my third campaign here, I mean, uh, I couldn't be happier with the decision I made. So earlier in the week, we tweeted out asking for questions using the hashtag AskJoeG. Here's a question we chose from one of our followers. The D3 football huddle wants to ask you, a big part of the Golden Eagles' success in 2013 was their experience at O-line. Who are some of the next men up to fill the graduations of beasts like Sanchez, Barrientos, Grennan, and Torres? Well, first of all, I'll just say on camera, I'm going to miss those guys. I love those dudes. But um, we have Caleb Fredillas coming back, who's going to be a senior. He's a big part of what we do. Um, Mike Ambrosio, who my freshman year, actually, when I first started, because I didn't start the season off, games five, six, and seven, or six, seven, eight, whatever it was, he was actually the center for when I played. Um, he played in a game at Alfred where Alfred two years ago was 12-1 and one and they were the defending Empire champs. So he has great experience and um, again what I talked about earlier with freshmen making the step to sophomores, we feel like we have a couple linemen in that regard that can really make that step. And uh, some of the recruits that we have coming in, freshmen or transfers, they're going to compete and that's what we want. We want competition in this program and we feel like we have that. And I think the guidance of Coach Potter, I think he's one of the best in the business. He'll get guys ready to play. So I think you know, it stinks losing all those seniors, but at the same time, that's the way that's the way things work. So we're gonna have to fill in those fill in those spots, and I think we'll be okay going forward. So now that the football season's over, what are you planning to do throughout the summer? Um, well, even before the summer, we'll, let's just talk about the spring. Right now, we're lifting four times a week, and our morning runs just started. So that's a challenge in itself, and it brings a, a lot of team camaraderie. It's gonna build us closer, and then obviously, a couple, uh, three or four weeks from now, or maybe even a little more we're going to have our spring practice. So we're going to have 16 practices to try and get timing right. And like you talked about earlier with the linemen, they're going to work on footwork and do whatever they can with Coach Potter. So I think those 16 practices um, um, will help us tremendously. And I think over the summer, guys, are, you know, a lot of guys are close either in the Buffalo or Rochester area. And I think they can get together and work on routes and do what they need to do. Uh, for me personally, I'm just going to keep doing what I do with the program here at Brockport. Lifting, running, throwing with whatever guys want to throw where I just want to stay sharp and just be ready come August 10th or 11th whenever that camp day comes because you know we need to be ready to go because we we have high expectations for this season and expectations are through the roof for for everyone I know I have expectations for myself coaches have expectations for us and that's what we want we want it no other way we want to try and you know get over the hump I know it's one game at a time but essentially we know at the end goal where we want to be so so, Joe, thank you so much for coming on. Congrats again on the great season. It was incredible covering you. Good luck next year. We'll be at all your games. First one is September 1st. Your schedule is already out. So thank you, everyone, for tweeting at us this week. We'll be sure to update our page for everything Bport Sports related. Tweet us for story ideas. Go ahead and give us a follow. That will do this week's edition of Eagle Talk with Justin Maybach. I'm Ben Gramado. Thank you for watching. This guy's legit. This guy's legit. <laughs>